Edberg Olson Hall right now and welcome to the Temple University offensive line coach and that's Alan Mogridge coach at Zach Gelb and Chase Sr. here Philly's number one college radio station WHIP how are you doing? I'm doing great hope you guys are doing well also thanks for the opportunity to holler at you here. Well, we appreciate you coming on, and uh, you're no stranger to UCF. Uh, you were there one of the, on their staff last year being their tight ends coach, but you guys had a bye week last week. I know you've been very big in recruiting ever since your days at UNC. What was it like uh, going out there recruiting a little bit during the bye week? You know, it was really good getting out, getting, uh, getting the relationships with the high school coaches, getting to see them again in the, in the high schools, and then obviously just having the presence out and about with, uh, with, with the Temple T, getting the brand out. And uh, plus, coming off, you know, the, the, the game and uh, with Rutgers, the areas I recruit, it, it was good to get back into those areas and, and see some guys and, uh, and talk about the prospect. When you sit down with the young man who's considering going to Temple University, what's the pitch? Why should they pick Temple University? Because I know the record isn't indicative of the program that Matt Rule's trying to build here. Well, I mean, you got to see the body of work that's being put out there and the progress that's been made from the start. And also, one of the things that we sell is our staff. I think we've got an unbelievable staff here. And if you're around any one of us, starting with the head coach, for any amount of time at all, whether you're a parent, whether you're a coach, whether you're a prospect, you see that we're genuine guys. We, we, we work at the game, and we have a passion for what we're doing. And obviously, our staff and this university, holy geez, I mean, it's one of those places. This place is one of the places that, just come take a look, and I promise you're going to see it. You're going to see what we're talking about from the from the degree you can gain from here, from the connections you can make with the city of Philadelphia. It's just, uh, I mean, those are those are all the things that 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 I push and we push as a staff. Hey, Alan, it's Jay Senior. Thanks for joining the show. During training camp, Matt Rule just raved about Kyle Friend, the type of player that he was, the person that he is off the field, and the toughness that he brings to the table. What makes Kyle Friend such a good player on and off the field? Kyle Friend has an, an enormous amount of pride, and, and pride is your personal responsibility and your daily effort. And what Kyle Friend does is he tries to walk the walk. There's not an area of Kyle, I mean, we, we do have a lot of respect for what Kyle does because Kyle's the same guy walking across campus that he is between the stripes, that he is in an academic setting in the classroom, that he is in my meeting room. And, you know, Kyle has a, has a great deal of pride in everything he's doing each and every day, and, and it, it, it is something that you, you want as a coach. It's good to have in your meeting room and, and certainly on your team. So Kyle's, Kyle's a tough-nosed guy that, that doesn't – he's hard on himself now. He's as critical of himself as he is anything else, and – and uh, that's that's why Kyle is so driven and why Kyle's having some success. Before he got hurt, Deion Dawkins was playing very well. He's got excellent size at 6'5". He's over 300 pounds. Uh, before he got injured, what did you see from him that really impressed you, and how high of a ceiling does Deion Dawkins have? You know what? Deion's got a very, very high ceiling. Uh, Deion's got to just continue to learn, continue to grow. Uh, late, I guess it was the Idaho game was his first start. We had been working him into the rotation, and it was one of those things. Even from the first snaps that he got, you could see when he learns it. When he learns it, and then what he did was he continued to bury himself in the classroom and learn and learn and. Learn. And he's a big physical guy. He's very athletic for that size, and what you see is a competitor. He's a competitor, and he works at it. Even if he's wrong, he's going to go a thousand miles an hour. And uh, those are good qualities to have in a in a young offensive lineman. And, you know, he's got a very high ceiling, I think, that, uh, you know, and, and the other thing, just like I said with Kyle, Dion understands what it's going to take for him to be what he what he wants to be and what we think he can be. So he's going to, he's got to put his nose on the grindstone and get back at it. Alan Mogrid joins us on the hotline, Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP. And coach, uh, this team hasn't been any stranger to big games this year, especially since they kicked off the year up against Notre Dame. Uh, you also played the likes of Rutgers and um, uh, Louisville as well that welcomed in a Heisman hopeful and Teddy Bridgewater. But now they play UCF this week, and you're no stranger to them. You were on their staff last year. For you personally, is there a little bit extra motivation for this game this week since you were a coach on the staff last year? Every single week, that up. there's there's a huge amount of motivation in making sure the guys are prepared and they're working the way they need to work. And just understanding uh, the the one thing I do have is the insight into what the UCF program is, and uh, that you know they're a hard nosed, tough bunch, and uh, they're going to play hard, snap the whistle, and that's kind of the things that I've been reiterating around here, and that obviously 
starts with uh, Coach O'Leary and their staff going all the way down. But my motivation is to make sure the Temple Owls are ready to go. And they have a phenomenal team this year in UCF. Uh, like we mentioned, 17th in the nation, 7-1, and one, coming off that big victory up against Houston. Their only loss of the year came up against South Carolina, and that game was within five points. But you know this UCF defense. Uh, you went up against them a lot of times last year in practices. Uh, what kind of challenges do they present to your offensive line? You know, they're stout in the middle. They've got two really good inside guys, and they've, they're playing a younger defensive end now who's learning it, and he's learning it pretty well watching the film. And then they've actually got a uh, one of their stud defensive ends talking about the guy that plays over the tight end in, in number 69, and he's a, he's a heavier body. So they're, they're, they build the thing stout up in the front, and, uh, you know, they're going to play with the, the linebackers, 41. He's a guy that will get downhill and hit you, and 57 is really good in space right there. And he'll play in the box some. So really they kind of build it in the middle and, 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 and build it stout, and they teach them to hunker in there and hold the gaps and, you know, they play, they play smash mouth, hard football. Blake Bortles is having a really good year. He's thrown for over 2,000 yards, 15 touchdowns, and just five interceptions. What makes him so good? Because he's got, he's got a nice arm. He's also got decent mobility, and he's more of a, a pro-style quarterback. I'll say this. Getting the opportunity to be with him for a year, I have a lot of respect for the way he approaches the game. Uh, Blake prepares. Blake, Blake Bortles prepares for the game. And, he watches the film, he watches the opponent film, and he puts the time in uh, to, to be the competitor that he is. So the success he's having this year, uh, it's no shock, to, no shock to anyone around that program who's, who's been over there because those people know how he prepares and how he works at it. Cody Booth was one of the Owls' top players last season, but obviously that came at the tight end position. During the offseason, Matt Rule wanted him to move to left tackle, and uh, after a few bumps in the road earlier on in the season, uh, in the season, which was expected because it is not an easy change going from tight end to left tackle, he looks like he's really taken on that role. I talked to him last week at practice, and uh, he's gotten really, really big. How, how, were you surprised at all at the transition that he's made from being a tight end uh, to the left tackle position? You know, it's something that, that we as a staff, when we talked about it and, and proposed the idea, it's something we knew he'd be able to handle. And you know what? He's working at it. He's working at it every day. He's putting the time in to, to be a better tackle. And, and you can see that on the field. I think you, you summed it up exactly right that, you know, he had some bumps in the road early and. And what's happened is you've seen a guy getting both feet on the ground and settling in and understanding what it's like to be a tackle. He really works at, you know, not to downplay the uh, the size factor either. I mean, he, this is a guy that when I say he works at it, I mean, that, that includes working that fork, you know what I mean? Sitting down and making sure you're taking the calories in you need to take so that he can stay big because he is a guy that fights to keep the weight on. So it's a matter of, you know, for him. You know, I, I laugh all the time. I, I joke with him. I say, you still sweating while you're eating? <laughs> that, keep it coming in, man. Keep the calories getting in there so that so that he can stay up, or, up around the weight he needs to be to compete. Given that he is such a good athlete and he's made that easy transition, or made the transition look easy, rather, does that make him more of a, a tractable prospect going to the next level because he did play, play tight end, an athletic position? I would, I would hope so. You know, I mean, there's things that... Obviously, he is a, a more athletic guy to, to be in that position, and you would hope that he's going to get a look there. He's got some other uh, tangible things that he does as far as the ability to snap and and, uh, and those kind of things, and then whatever measurables, measurables he puts up as far as after the season with the 40, the vertical, and how all that measures up. But really, the biggest body of work is what he's doing between the stripes. That's what, they'll, that's what those scouts will take notice of. Alan Mogridge joins us a few more questions with the Temple University offensive line coaches at Temple University football coaches show with Gelb and Chase. And, Coach, we've seen a few players bounce around this year. Uh, Juice Granger was a quarterback last year, even played some quarterback this year. Now he's playing wide receiver, caught a touchdown pass in that Cincinnati game. Chris Corey made the transition from QB to tight end, and we mentioned Cody Booth. But when you sit down a player and you tell them they have to change positions, what's the toughest part of that transition to try to get them into being an elite player at a new position? Well, just understanding, getting, getting them to understand that it's it's big team, little me. You know what I mean? Understand that. I, I can I can really relate to that because I look back at my experience at North Carolina as a player under Coach Brown, and I, I played four positions. It, it ended up becoming uh, one of those things where it was almost every spring, and it was based on need. So 
then it becomes understanding that this is about the team. There's a bigger picture here. It's about the team. Our team has this need. We need you to step in and fill it. Now, how willing are you to go about the fill it part? Are you going to buy in? Are you going to go do the things in the weight room that you have to do and do the things out on the field and, and that, that ego thing that, that all – all males tend to have at times setting that thing aside and understanding that it's about the bigger picture and it's about it's about Temple University. So just making sure that the groundwork's laid and, and and also understanding, hey, this is why it's a better fit. Being able to show them the tangible evidence and help them to understand this is why it's the better fit. When Matt and um, and Coach Shatterfield made the change from Connor Riley to P.J. Walker, this offense has really thrived, and Connor did a good job this year. Uh, but you, when you look at P.J. Walker, he has a strong arm. He's finding a lot of good connections to Robbie Anderson, and he could also extend the play with his legs, and he's clutch too. He went on a 90-plus yard drive in high school to win a state championship over in New Jersey with Elizabeth. But when you bring in a quarterback that could kill you with both the legs and his big arm, how does that change the mentality of an offensive line? Well, I mean, you know, obviously we, we feel like we've got two good quarterbacks and we've got to keep them both clean. And, but when you do have a guy that, that'll move his feet and break contain on some of the pocket passes and kind of get moving, it, it it definitely helps and it slows down some of the things that defenses can do. Uh, if, you know where I'm, if you know where I'm going right there, I mean, definitely. all of a sudden those ends, those ends can't be as risky on the up and unders on a tackle. Now they've got to make sure they keep contained. Now all of a sudden instead of a – flat out speed rush you might get a little mush rush with the eyes on the quarterback so the pocket doesn't get collapsed as much in there so there is definitely a change when a guy will will put on tape that he pulls it that he'll pull it down and run and then uh, obviously the protections you know getting the quarterback outside the pocket and some of that stuff that helps as well what are what are some of the pluses and minuses of having a, a, a scrambling quarterback like that as an offensive lineman because uh, you, you know you, you set back ready to 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 cover the defensive line, and then when you look back behind you, you, you never know where the quarterback's going to be, but at the same time, uh, it makes your job a little bit easier knowing that he can escape some pressure if the defensive linemen or linebackers are able to get through the line of scrimmage. Well, the one thing that we try to teach is we, we, we always give them the launch point of the quarterback in every protection, you know what I mean? So those guys have an idea as we set the protection and the call gets in where that quarterback should be. Now, as far as looking back, I hope that ain't happening now. <laughs> <laughs> and the linebackers where they need to be, and we got we've got ourselves fit in there, and we got good punches. But you know, we know where the launch points are going to be, and where we have to keep the defenders out of. And then you know, the rest of that's on the queue back there, and, and where he's going to go. But we're going to try to get our eyes on our target, and get a good inside inside leg up, outside hand punch, and eyes on your key right there. And we we know where the launch point is. And we're going to just fight the fight. Coach, uh, final one right before we let Alan Mogridge go, offensive line coach for the Temple Owls. They play UCF at home on Saturday. UCF is 17th in the nation at 7-1. and one. Early on in the year, the team struggled in the goal line uh, formation. They weren't able to cash on in on some drives and had to rely on some field goal attempts. But as of late, your offensive line's coming up big, uh, and they're getting some big-time touches to Kenny Harper and Zaire Williams within the 20s. Uh, what have you seen change so far out of your offensive line from early in the year until now, especially in the red zone? Well, I'll tell you what, just, just growth and development. I mean, they just continue to continue to grow, continue to understand, learn football, learn our schemes, how we're how what we're what we want to get done on each and every play. And then obviously obviously finishing, being finishers, not not accepting, not accepting anything but getting it where it needs to be. If we've got it we've got to get the first down, getting the first down. If we need to punch it in the end zone, punch it in the end zone. So just the continued growth and development of the line. And obviously some of the young players that are, that are stepping in and, and, and even some of the older guys coming back and stepping in. But the growth and development of them over the course of the season, I think, is what you're seeing right now. Coach, we appreciate a few minutes today. Outstanding spot. We hope to get you on again in the future. Don't be a stranger to the show. And best of luck coming up on Saturday. Sounds awesome. Go out. Coach Alan Mogridge right there, offensive line coach for the Temple Football Owls. 215-204-9449 is the number if you want to call and hang with us. We'll take a quick break here on Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP. And when we get back, we got to preview some Temple Owls going up against Towson as the Owls are back in action tonight for a big matchup in Maryland. 